So hello everyone, welcome to our channel, The Opsent. Today we are going to see how to create and connect MariaDB RTS using EC2. So in this video you will discover how to set up a MariaDB RTS database and connect it with EC2 instance. The best part is all the steps we will cover can be done without incurring any extra cost because they are eligible for the free tier. So now we will sign into the AWS console. For that, open a new window browser and go to the AWS Management Console. In the console, type RDS in the search bar and choose RD Render Services to access the Amazon RDS Console. This way, you can keep this guide open while working in the AWS Console. So the second step is, now we'll create a MariaDB instance. In this step, we will use Amazon RDS to make a MariaDB instance. We'll pick a small size instance called DBD2 Micro. Give it 20 GB of storage. Just remember, all of this won't cost you anything extra since it is eligible for the free tier. Now we'll follow the given steps. So now at the right top corner of the Amazon RDS console, choose the region where you want to create your DB instance. Currently, I'm using region Singapore. You have to, uh, you have the ability to choose which region to host your Amazon RDS activity. In the create database section, choose create database. So we have done that. So after that, I'll show you the creation method. Now we have to select a database engine type engine version and the template for this tutorial choose the standard create method and mariadb as the engine type select the default db engine version and free tier as the template so now now db instance identifier this is like giving your database a special name for this tutorial use demo db it should be unique in your chosen location So the next is master username. So think of it as your username to access the database. We will use admin in this example. After that, we'll set the password. It's your secret code to get into the database. Make sure it's between eight to 41 characters long and does not contain slash, single quote, double quote, or an add direct. Now, just type your password again to make sure you didn't make any mistakes. Confirm the password. Okay, so now we'll move forward to instant configuration. DB instance class. Think of this as picking the size of your database computer. For this tutorial, just go with the choice called DBD2 Micro, which has one virtual CPU and one GB of RAM. It is good for the free tier. So now, storage storage type consider this as the kind of storage your database will use choose general purpose ssd gp2 it's like using a reliable and fast drive for your data allocated storage this is like deciding how much space you want for your database set it to 20 gigabytes for this tutorial but know that you can make it much larger up to 64 terabyte if needed now we'll enable storage or auto scale. If your database space needs can change a lot, you are not sure how much you need, you can turn on this option. It makes Amazon RDS automatically increase your storage when it's necessary. However, for this tutorial, you don't need to worry about this option. So then availability for or durability. For this tutorial, you don't need to think about this option. It's a feature that provides high availability by creating a backup copy of your database in a different location. But it's not necessary here and it's come with an extra cost. So just skip it for now. Next is connectivity, compute resource. Ignore this option for the tutorial. It's for connecting your database to another services. You might have not needed here. The next is network type. Stick with the default choice, which is IPv4. It's the standard way computer talks to each other over the internet. Amazon RDS supports both IPv4 and IPv6. 
So the next is VPC, Virtual Private Cloud. Choose default VPC. This helps organize your resources in a secure and controlled network environment. So next is DB subnet group. Go with the default subnet group. It helps manage your data is stored securely. Public access. Choose no. This means if you anyone have URL of your database, they can access it easily. Now next is VPC secure security group. It's like setting up a protective barrier around your database and it will allow connections from your current device. Now availability zone. Select no preference. Database port. Keep it at the default value, which is 3306. It's the channel through which your database communicates with other services. Now, the next is database authentication. Database authentication. MariaDB offers password authentication and password and IAM database authentication. Keep the default password. Now, monitoring. Keep the default enable enhanced monitoring unchecked for this tutorial. Now, addition configuration. Leave this section default as it is. And in the is and, and in the end, choose create database. So we'll refresh it and check whether our database is created. We'll wait till it, it might take a time. So after creating a MariaDB instance, create a Ubuntu EC2 machine with simple configuration and launch it. So now we launch an instance. Now we are creating an instance. We'll name it demo DB. And we have launched the instance. We'll wait for some time till our instance is launched. So our instance is successfully initiated. So if we will refresh to check the status. So our instance has been initialized. Now we'll click on the instance ID. So now we'll copy the public IP address so that we can connect it on mobile XTEM. We'll paste the public ID and we'll specify the username. I will use the private key. Okay, so now we'll update it. We'll use the command sudo apt update.
so so it has been updated so now we'll use a command to install mariadb client in our ec2 instance so sudo apt get install mariadb dash client Yes, we'll type UI. Now connect to a MariaDB instance. Here we will use a command to connect. Also, we substitute the DNS name endpoint for your DB instance and the master username that you used. So, okay, we will use the following command. Before that, we'll copy the endpoint. So, we have copied the endpoint. We'll go to move next. So now we'll use the command mysql dash h. Now we'll paste the endpoint dash p three three zero six dash u. Then we'll use the master username that is admin. Dash P. And now we'll enter the password. So after running the command, we can see this as a result. So we have successfully connected with our MariaDB instance. Thank you everyone, we'll meet in the next lecture.